Thalia with FedArt and Creative Forces, and this is my fifth polymer clay video. Finishing your work different ways for different projects makes sense. I don't always cook the clay. Sometimes I stick the raw clay to surfaces. I make a lot of drips lately. In this case, I used the polymer clay as a setting for cubic zirconium. I've been making a lot of magnetic refrigerator snails, you know, attaching a magnet to a polymer clay snail, and I've been placing them on the exteriors of people's vehicles and in other places where a magnet will stick. Here's a creature I made out of some polymer clay canes, and um, I think that he'd look a little better if I added some Sculpey glaze to him. So I'm going to do that. When you use this glaze, I recommend using a paintbrush. And um, putting on three coats is a good idea. Letting them dry in between and not baking them at all after um, you apply the glaze is the best way to deal with it. So um, you're going to apply this glaze only to completely baked clay and you're not going to bake it again. And I'm going to put on a coat. And then I'll wait for 30 minutes, then I'll repeat the process, and it will smooth over any scratches or finger marks you've got, basically glaze over things. With this piece, I used some sandpaper. Sandpaper can be really great because it'll take off a layer of clay that um, has been touched by your fingers and the pigment has been moved around to places where you really didn't want it to be. And so if you're sculpting with any sort of cane type material, it can be really helpful to take off a layer using the sandpaper because then you can actually see the pattern. So if you notice a pattern dis disappearing um, because you've touched the clay too much but you haven't really stretched the clay a lot, you may be able to uncover the pattern once the piece is cooked with some sandpaper. The glaze is non-toxic and safe to use. Um, it's fine to use it inside. The resin is best used outside. Another thing you might consider doing, which works just great, is using a spray sealant or varnish sealant. And um, I would recommend doing that outside, but something like Mod Podge will work really well. And the only thing to know about Mod Podge is that once you've applied it, you really can't add anything else to your sculpture because the Mod Podge really resists pretty much everything. I'm going to be coating these two snails that I made out of polymer clay with a layer of clear UV curing resin. It will increase their durability. I work with resin in the shade and I move my pieces to the sun to cure. Resin is very cool stuff. You can cast large pieces out of resin. It is an adhesive, so I'm going to be adding some glitter to the feelers to give them a little extra sparkle. Using resin as a glaze gives you a very thick coating. It only takes a few minutes for these pieces to become completely hard in direct sunlight. Exposing them to sunlight too quickly will result in curing before you're ready. You don't have to know why you're interested in pursuing a particular subject for your art. You should just go with it. And if, uh, if you continue to pursue it, you will come to understand why you're doing it. I would like to make a full-size swimming pool filled with clear resin, like the resin that I demonstrated in this video. And I would like there to be lights coming up from under the swimming pool. So just like swimming pools 
are sometimes lit from the ground or the sides at night. I would like my resin filled pool to light up from underneath. And then I would like to suspend a very lifelike, long haired human figure, you know, a, a mannequin, a uh, dummy sculpture, a few inches under the surface of the water swimming with the hair flowing backward. So it's as if the pool is frozen in time with someone swimming under it. And not only would it give people the impression that time has stopped, but also they can walk on water. So I think that that would be an exciting space for people to have a party or um, reflect on time as a concept. Making art is a very personal thing. And it may be quite different for you than it is for me. But one thing that I'm sure of is that as you work with the materials, your own process will unfold naturally. So don't get bogged down in the details. If you have questions about technique, ask someone. Feel free to experiment and don't be too hard on yourself.